Hi, I'm Darren Ferrugia and welcome. The other night I had a student in here and um, he, he was playing some jazz for me. And it sounded pretty good. Like he was sounding like he knew what he was doing, except when it came to play fills. At this point, it became clear to me that his vocabulary for playing fills in the jazz style needed a bit of attention. So we did a little bit of work on that and I showed him three patterns or three fills that you heard me play at the start of this video. So let's get into it. Okay, so fill number one is pretty simple and it's basically a paradiddle diddle played over triplets. Right, left, right, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, left. Now what I'll do is I'll play this for you slowly. I'm gonna keep the right hand on the tom and I'm gonna to play my left hand on the snare drum so that you can hear the rhythm that my right hand is outlining. Also, all of these fills are in the category of leading hand fills, or at least that's what I call them. I've done a video on this topic before, so if you wanna check that out, I'll leave a link in the description below. So anyway, here's the paradiddle diddle. Right hand on the tom, my left hand is on the snare drum, played as triplets at this tempo. One, a two, a one, two, three, four. So the idea with this concept is the right hand will move around the kit and the left hand will stay on the snare drum. This type of movement or motion around the drum set is referred to as an oblique motion. That is one hand moves around the kit and the other hand remains at one surface. So in this case, it's the snare drum, but in other instances, it could be the hi-hat or whatever. Anyway. So that's the first pattern. Let me play that for you in context. I'm gonna play two bars of time and then I'm gonna play two bars of this fill. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, on to fill number two. Now this is another easy one if you know how to play a jazz waltz. So a jazz waltz has this particular ride symbol. I'm gonna count this in three. One, two, three, one, two, three. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that ride cymbal pattern, I'm gonna play that on the first time here, and then I'm going to fill in the remaining notes with my left hand. So right hand on the tom, left hand filling in the gaps played on the snare drum. What I'll do is I'll start with that ride cymbal rhythm on the tom so that you can hear that rhythm and then I'll add the left hand to that. So I'm gonna count this off in three. A one, two, three, one, two, three. So what I'll do now is I'll play the right hand between the two toms and I'll also play the right hand on the snare drum. When I do play the right hand on the snare drum, I'm going to accent those strokes on the snare drum with my right hand just so that they pop out a little more compared to the left hand filling in the gaps. I'm gonna count this in three, here we go. One, two, three, one, two, three. So again, if I wanna play this three, four pattern across two bars of four, four, what I'll do is play that three, four pattern twice, which gives us six beats. And then I'm gonna make up that extra two beats by playing that very first pattern that we learnt, which was the paradiddle diddle. So it'll be two jazz waltz fills plus a paradiddle diddle, but that's about the best way I can word it. So here we go, I'll play two bars of time and then two bars of this fill. One, two, a one, two, three, four. So 
So our little mathematic equation here is 3 plus 3 plus 2 equals 8. What we can do is actually we can reorder those numbers so that, for example, we can start with the 2, 4 bar followed by the 2, 3, 4 bars. That will sound like this. 1, 2, uh, one, two 3, 4. And the third option here is to put the 2-4 bar in between the 2-3-4 bars. Of 1, 2, 3, 4. And fill number three, I would say, is probably the most complex of the three fills. And basically what it is, is the first fill that we played, the paradiddle diddle. However, we're bringing it forward by one eighth in the triplet. So we're actually gonna start on the four and R. So let me count this in for you slowly. And um, I will play this. One, a two, a one, two, three, four. So in order to get into that fill that I just played, I'm actually anticipating the fill. So the very last note of my ride cymbal pattern, four and ah, is where I would start the fill. Here's an example. One, two, three, four. Now the other good thing about this fill is you can also come out of the fill on the four and R. So you can play a crash on the last note of the bar and tie that over the bar onto beat one. Here we go. One, two, three, four. If you're playing a jazz ride cymbal pattern and you go to play a fill that starts on beat one, you may want to leave off the last note of that ride cymbal pattern so that you're not making this quick move from the ride cymbal back to the snare drum or back to the toms. So I would suggest just playing a quarter note on beat four and instead picking up that skip note with the left hand on the snare drum if you want to do that. That would sound like this. So I'm going to use the um, example with the two, three, four bars and the two, four bar. One, two, three, four. Now in terms of orchestrations, I'm using a very simple setup here. So I'm orchestrating it between the toms and the snare drum. If you've got more drums or you've got effects or other things that you want to try, then go for it. But I'm using a pretty standard setup here. The other thing you can do is just play an accent on the first note of each phrase. So you're really just getting one tom hit per phrase. So using the first example, the paradiddle diddle, that would sound like this. The 3-4 version would sound like this. And that third fill would sound like this.
And then you can also add some left hand accents as well. I'm going to use the last example. Now that you understand these three fairly simple fills, then the next step is to uh, incorporate this into your vocabulary. So what I'll do is I'll trade fours with myself. I'm gonna play four bars of time and then I'm gonna play four bars of these fills and I'm just gonna mix them up within that four bar phrase. Here we go. There is a PDF that accompanies this lesson. So if you want to download that, I'm going to leave a link in the description below. So there you have it. There are three simple fills that you can play, practice, pass on to your students if they're in a similar situation where they're playing big band music in high school or stage band music or they just want to get into playing jazz and they don't have much of a, a repertoire of fills, this is a really great place to start. And as you can hear, there's a lot you can do with it. So um, I would urge you to have a crack at these things. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button. Um, now, if you haven't done so already, subscribe and remember to hit that notification bell so that you know when I've uploaded a video, which is every week. So until next week, have a great week and uh, I'll see you all soon. Bye.